children's author Emma Walton Hamilton. What, what's the key to writing a children's book? Gosh, um, I would say respecting children as, uh, as readers and not talking down to them. If, if anything, it's all basically about trusting their judgment and their intelligence and, and hopefully speaking to what interests them and what they're passionate about. What are children interested in? Well, just about everything that adults are interested in, for the most part. Their world around them, uh, growing up, um, learning new things, music, arts, uh, sports, you name it. All the, all the same things we're interested in. How many children's books have you written? I've written, uh, well, just now about to release the 17th children's book um, that I actually co-write uh, with my mother. Yep. Believe it or not. What's it like working with your mother as a co-author? Well, it's a great pleasure. Uh, we weren't sure it would be such a great pleasure to begin with. We were, were both a little bossy. We're both very opinionated ladies. And we thought, ooh, mother-daughter working together, this could be tricky. But happily, uh, we play to each other's strengths and uh, we have a great time working together and it's turned out very well. And your mother is Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, what part of the book do you write? What part of the book do you write? Um, Emma's the structure as much as anything, and I'm the sort of, I think, if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, I think I'm more the flights of fancy. I do the, um, certainly the, 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 the image making, the, the openings, the, the closings. Emma The big is picture. With, I, I do the big picture, and Emma says, now we must have a finish, this is the end of the first act, where do we go from here? And she makes me focus on the shape of the book. But the actual sort of images and things are probably my strength and Emma's is the structure as much as anything. We seem to complement each other, at least I think we do. I do too. Wonderfully. Why did you start writing children's books? I started um, as a complete surprise. I started as, um, it was in answer to a um, game that I was playing with my children and uh, I had to pay a forfeit. I was the first to lose the game. I said, oh, what will my forfeit be? And my eldest daughter, Jennifer, said, write a story, write us a story, because I used to love to scribble and write things. And I really honestly thought, oh, that's going to be simple. I could just write a small thing like an Aesop's fable or something very short. And then I thought, no, this is my stepdaughter, and it might be a wonderful way to help us bond. And I came up with a little idea and kind of kept fleshing it out. And the next thing I knew, there was a book. And if it hadn't been for Blake, my husband, Blake Edwards, I don't think I would ever have finished it. I didn't have confidence. I didn't know what I was doing. But he kept saying, Julie, it doesn't matter. It's a sweet idea. Keep the pages coming. Uh, and you've been hooked ever since. And I've been hooked ever since. And that was 40 years ago, just about. So uh, I've been writing ever since. And so how many children's books have you authored? Um, Emma, we've done 17 together, 17 together and, and then done you've done four on your own. Four on my own, plus a memoir. Yeah. And uh, so we go back and forth, really, uh, and we have more coming. So Now, Emma Walton Hamilton, do you live close to each other? Do you email each other? <laughs> we, uh, what do you well, do? We, How do you do it? Unfortunately, we live most of the year on, on opposite coasts. And um, we always work best when we're together and love to be together whenever we can be. But we've become very reliant on uh, modern technology. And we use webcam uh, for a lot of our work sessions. We, uh, we log on together at the same time. And, and we can time see each change, other. It's killing because poor mom has to get up three in hours earlier Angeles, than right? she Yes. In LA, she'll say, Mom, 10 o'clock is halfway through my morning. Can you get up at 7? And I'm saying, well, I think I can, you know. He does very well. And I, I do my best. And I'm not as, as literate on my um, computer as she is, but I do my best. Is, it, is there a certain length that children's books should be? Say that again? Is there a certain length? It depends that a on the age of the child. What age do you write for? We write all for ages. all ages. I mean, it, you know, with tremendous audacity, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we write picture books, we write uh, young adult novels, we write chapter books, we write middle grade readers, um, and our latest book is, is an anthology for all ages, yes. a poetry anthology uh, called the Julie Andrews Collection of Poems, Songs, and Lullabies. And this, is, uh, this one is actually quite thick. So Very thick. It is the first book uh, um, with our lovely new publishers, Little Brown, who are part of the Hachette 
group. And they actually came to us and said, would you consider doing an anthology for us? And we We've said... We've had so much fun, we're doing another one after Yes, <laughs> we are. And it was enormous fun to compile. We, we obviously, it's our favorite poems. We, We've been fond of them all our lives. My father instilled in me a love of poetry. I hopefully instilled it in all my kids. We read to each other, we give poems as gifts to each other. Uh, all our lives we've done that. And suddenly, here we are asked to put down our favorites. And the first choices, which were about 20, were really easy. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we had the most wonderful journey of discovery as from finding what we really loved. We and challenged each other. Digging back into our memories and yeah family anthologies and uh... and we eventually came down to nine separate um, themes uh, and before each theme there is a, a, a piece that we wrote explaining why we love this theme let's say it's optimism or the, or the countryside or nature um, and why each choice of poem or, or song lyric it within that theme resonates for us what memory it associates yeah. with for us and, and so we've forth. always um, as a family, um, exchanged poems for fun and for as gifts at birthdays and special days and holidays and so on. So we sort of challenged each other to, to write a poem and we plucked up our courage and uh, added a few more and there are a few of ours in there. Now you've got Emma Walton Hamilton, you've got some of your children here, grandchildren. Uh, are they your focus group for children's books? Absolutely. They have been. They absolutely I think it's, have been. It's, uh, the key. Actually you were when I was writing right. on my own. And then, of course, now all the grandchildren are tremendous help. Not only our focus group, I mean, they, they help us know what's working and what's not working, of course, but they also provide a tremendous source of ideas for us. And uh, many of our books were inspired by... Such as, example. Uh, well, for example, uh, the Dumpy the Dump Truck series, which is the first series that we collaborated on, was inspired by my son, Sam, who, uh, who is a passionate truck lover and uh, would only read books about trucks. And, and we were having trouble finding uh, those that had a little bit more than just nonfiction, you know, the, the bulldozer goes crunch kind of books. So we wrote that series for him, and uh, we're working on a new series now with little girls in mind, inspired by my daughter. So. Yes. And Miss Andrews, you've also written a memoir. Yes. Oh, this is the first half of your life, basically, right? Well, yes. It 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 goes up to my coming out to. Um, the west coast uh, of America for the very first time and, and my first movie but uh, I, it's it's about the first third of my life you know and uh, it was it took a long time to do I would never have done it if she hadn't been so so generous with her time to push me and to make me do it and help me with it and so on is there the second half or the the second third coming out a lot of people are asking that um, to be really honest with you I don't know at this point uh, it took a long, long time to write the first part, so um, maybe one day. Emma Walton Hamilton, what's your favorite children's book that oh, you've written? Oh, gosh. That I've written yes. or that I've read? Yeah, either one. You know, um, well, the book that was for me the formative book uh, growing up was Norton Jester's The Phantom Tollbooth. That was just my favorite go-back-to book on rainy days and so forth. Um, and people often ask us which is our favorite of the books that we've written, and it's so hard to answer. It's like which saying, is. you know, which is your favorite chocolate in a box of chocolates, or which is your favorite child, you know, because you love them all for different reasons. Um, but I would say that I'm particularly proud and excited about the one we've just finished, the poetry anthology, which is uh, a real labor of love and so beautifully produced for us and it's by It's given Little us Brown. enormous amount of pleasure to, to pull it together. Um, I love the music in poetry and find that a lot of the songs that I've been associated with or even songs that I love and I haven't actually sung uh, have sometimes the most beautiful lyrics and I usually choose songs for lyrics first and foremost and then the melody if, I, if, if it's a beautiful melody it's just everything comes together and so I've always felt that lyrics to songs are sometimes poems poems in themselves. So I've included a lot in the book. I'm hoping that children will discover for themselves or adults, wow, that's a beautiful poem. Who wrote it? And then realize that it's a song. And, uh, and want to go and listen to the music. And want to go and listen to the music. As mothers, finally, is it important to teach young children to read or be exposed to reading? Oh, Does that make a difference? we passionate advocates of literacy and, and for literacy 
we do everything we can in that respect. And I would say that it's, it's not so much incumbent upon parents to teach their children to read. They may well learn that at school. What's incumbent upon us is to teach them to love reading and to read to them and with them as often as possible. And in that way, they will very likely grow up to be lifelong readers themselves. I, I have to boast a little bit. She's written the most wonderful book and self-published it. It's called Raising Bookworms. And it's about just that, raising children to love and find the joy in reading and keep it constant as school years go by and how difficult it becomes uh, when assignments are handed to you and sometimes they're very boring. How do you keep a child's love of reading alive and sparkling and her book is just wonderful. Well if people are interested in finding that book or other children's books that y'all have written and this newest one where can they go? Where should well, they go? Thank you for asking. They can go to our website which is julieandrewscollection.com julieandrewscollection.com for any of the books in the collection and also uh, raisingbookworms.com is the site for the for the reading book.